with the Mike Pilavachi allegations being substantiated, I give my thoughts and opinion on what's happened. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Rev Dan. I'm a vicar in the Church of England and this is Digging Deeper. This is a, a segment on my channel where I dig deeper into one of the big stories that is around at the moment. And the story that I'm looking at today is the story of Mike Pilavachi, uh, who is or was uh, the lead pastor at a church just down the road from me, not far from me at all, called Soul Survivor. There was an investigation into allegations against him and now they've been substantiated. That's what they, uh, the national safeguarding team who have done the investigation are saying. And the word substantiated means, uh, uh, looking on, the, on Google here, uh, that substantiate is to provide evidence to support or prove the truth of um allegations or the like. So the allegations that have been put against Mike Pilavachi have been substantiated. They found truth in them. We're not receiving fully what that looks like. And I think uh, that could be because he, from 2012, he was a vicar in the Church of England. He's had a ministry for 40 years and he's going to go down the clergy disciplinary measure. And so some things I don't think can get out into the press and we'll have to wait uh, for a certain amount of time for that process to happen to fully understand what uh, really did happen. So we, we, we got some headlines uh, what's happened. I used an Anglican Inks article um, for this uh, episode and it says the internal church investigation into Mike Pilavachi uh, being conducted by the NST and the Diocese of St Albans, that's where uh, Soul Survivor is based in the Diocese of St Albans, has now been concluded. Uh, having explored the safeguarding concerns fully, according to the House of Bishops' guidance, the investigation team has concluded that they are substantiated. These relate to conduct in his leadership and ministry, both before and after he was ordained in 2012, spanning 40 years from his time as a youth leader to current day. This and this is probably the big concern, isn't it? 40 years of this happening from youth leader to current day. Granted, times have changed 40 years ago, times were very different, and there's more awareness now and more understanding. But um, through this time, from when he became a youth leader up until current day, uh, his ministry has grown, and I think part of that has, has, has caused this situation which is a really sad situation um, and it's a, a, basically it's abuse of power and um, but this is what happens people like uh, Mike Pilavachi will get into the church and use those positions of power the, the sad thing with this is that he set up a massive church soul survivor so when I was in my training church again not too far away a whole load of our youth would go down on a Sunday evening to soul survivor and there was big festivals in the summer that he was involved with in and, and set up. And, and so it's um, really just, you know, such a massive fallout from that. And a lot of people who came to faith through Soul Survivor found Soul Survivor as their church and now being rocked by this. But the question is, and, and there's so many questions coming out uh, and, and for the comments from my, from my video on Friday, there's questions as well, is... Uh, you know, how how can this happen? How can it be led to happen? Over 40 years, there are many people involved in this. Why didn't people stand up before? That's a, that's a big question. But uh, it, it seems that he was very coercive. So uh, go back to the article. It says, the overall substantiated concerns are described as an abuse of power relating to his ministry and spiritual abuse, described in guidance as a form of emotional and psychological abuse characterised by a systematic pattern of coercive and controlling behaviour in a religious context. It was concluded that he used a spiritual authority to control people and that his coercive and controlling behaviour led to inappropriate relationships, the wrestling of youths and massaging of young male interns. 
So we've got this, uh, you know, for him it's like a perfect storm, isn't it? Uh, that he, he, he's, he's taking this control. So it was there before, one of signs before, but he's got bigger and then he's leading the church. And so he's very controlling and coercive control. Um, and he's used that as well as his spiritual authority. So as soon as he starts leading this church, it gets successful. He's going out, speaking to these massive conferences, big well-known names. So he's got that to protect himself uh, and, and, and have this authority. And people are going to flood into his church because of him and, you know. And we then um, have in that that he's a very controlling person and controlling uh, the situation all the time. Um, it'd be interesting uh, to understand that the same, I wonder if it was the same with the Ravi Zacharias situation. I'm not sure, something that I need to look into. Or maybe if you know, if you know, um, if these sound similar, uh, comment below and, uh, and, and tell us. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I think he was, Ravi Zacharias kind of had that uh, very control. Uh, he definitely had the... Uh, the spiritual abuse there the spiritual authority uh but um i think he i think he was from what i remember a while ago now but uh you know this is the, the, the problem that's what i said on friday when we let people get big names uh and and then it's all about oh this is great i'm gonna see this person speak or did you see that person speak at that conference it's great and actually they're living a life which is contrary to what they're speaking to so they're basically going to these conferences and this they're spewing out lies spewing out lies because they're really uh, living uh, a life that is is not to what they're preaching and i get every preacher uh, will struggle with something but you know if you're doing this for 40 years and you're not changing then you've got bigger questions yes i will preach on something and i think well you know i'm being a bit of a hypocrite i need to change that you know uh, this is not good and it's and god's made aware through the the text through the preaching something that i might not have been aware of or something that i kind of knew but needed to address so you change but for 40 years <sighs> the investigation team is aware of the courage that it takes for the many people it's spoken to to come forward and share their experiences support has and will continue to be offered to those who have shown courage in coming forward survivors have contacted the team of being alerted to the outcome and this thing a lot of people say well you know they're the adults and these are young male interns and stuff but I, you know when you're being controlled uh, by a strong personality and you're you know if you're an intern you're coming in you're quite vulnerable you want to you're starting a career as it were you're you're understanding whether you're called and you know when you've got someone who's taking advantage of that and making you 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 know people like this can destroy um people uh, uh, make them feel very weak very small that they can't go and say anything ever uh, because they've been controlled they've been indoctrinated in that sense to not being able to uh, speak out but what we've seen is as a group this they have and an investigation has been done uh, which those concerns were substantiated but again uh, over 40 years it's the people on the sides who are now looking back going you know I saw it but I didn't do anything about it um, Andy Croft uh, who was his right hand man has been caught up in this and he's still uh, suspended you know but again I say 40 40 years so it goes on um, Mike Fellow actually has resigned from his role as sole survivor and resigned his license to the Bishop of Alban, St Albans and therefore cannot currently minister in the Church of England. And I doubt if he's going to be able to minister again. He's going to go through this clergy discipline measure. And um, and that will be uh, a process. Uh, they, they do after uh, a while. They, they, they produce the findings and, and, and things so we should understand more what's going on but you know i think he's he, he's walked away anyway uh i don't know he won't be able to minister again at all and who would want him to you know who could trust him now or before <laughs> i did uh i did see him once um at a new wine conference years ago uh, 
I don't know when, two th- about 10 years ago maybe. And um, it was a very strange experience. He, he, he acted more like a comedian on stage. And, there's, and there should be a recording because they always record new wine talks. And he, I think they like have an hour maybe 45 minutes an hour and most of it was like a comedy routine and then it seemed to me at the time that uh, he remembered that he was there to give a inspirational talk and, and kind of rushed the last part because it was all you know he he liked the, the laughs and being this comedian it's any, ever t- any time I ever saw him and then um, he called you know they do this ministry time and then he called for the ministry time and it all got weird it got weird we're talking about thousands of people in the tent and it got weird and it got out of control and there was i remember really this is really early on in my christian faith and um first time i ever seen anything like this and i remember being and there's someone behind me screaming out like screaming and i thought that's demonic the way they were screaming and it was like and it felt like a real weird you know and I, I, will I say demonic? There was something not quite good there, should I say? And it's getting out of control. Um, and then he disappeared. He disappeared off the stage. It was, it was gone. And it's like, you know, you 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 have this time. You're telling stories. You're getting all these laughs, and it's all great. And then you rush this message at the end. Do this ministry time, and it gets weird. It gets weird, and then and then you're gone. Um, and that's the only time, and it, I, I wasn't left with a good impression. I never saw him after that, heard him speaking, you know, so that's the only time, and it was just a bit, for me, it was a bit, you know, what what's this all about? So, um, the article goes on separately, but related to the case. The National Second Team was granted permission to take out a complaint under the clergy discipline measure against Mike Pilavachi relating to safe kind of concerns post ordination. So this is only going to be post 2012, not before. This is an ongoing process and no further details can be given until it's concluded. So that's why we're not hearing all of the stuff coming out because um, they can't. It will, you know, it's a, there's a danger that if all that comes out, then the case is going to collapse against him. But that's only for the past virtually 10 years. Um, you know, it's 30 years before where there's that's it. He's, he's you know gets away scot free, and he's already resigned his license. So that's it. He's not he's not going to come back. A lot of stuff has come out. Like I say, we have to wait and see. The Bishop of St Albans, Anna Smith said, "This has been a painful process for everyone involved, going back over the years." I'm sorry, on behalf of the church for the hurt caused, and would like to acknowledge the courage of those who came forward to share their lived experience. I'm aware that would be further contact with individuals about a more, uh, more personalised response. Um, a senior pastor at Salisbury remains suspended. That's uh, Andy Croft under HR process, having stepped back voluntarily from one of ministry, while the Church of England process, as, as outlined by the House of Bishops, guidance runs its course. Further investigation about concerns raised relating to the former senior Church of England leader linked with Soul Survivor festivals are ongoing. Now this stage of the process is over Soul Survivor Watford. Uh, they have commissioned an independent review to be led by Fiona Scolding KC. This is separate to and independent of the Internal Church of England investigation with the full report to be published at the end. Um, I'm missing a line there. It said the investigation team stressed the vast majority of the same kind of concern raised related to Mike Pirolovacci and his abuse of power in ministry. And, you know, and this is, I suppose, where the checks and balances are. I don't know how Soul Survivor operates um, as a church. Most churches in England, they, they have a, a, the incumbent, that's a vic, vicar or rector, a priest in charge, however they may be called. They have church wardens, uh, usually two. Uh, that's a legal position. Um, and they sit uh, to help uh, the the incumbent be a critical friend but uh, also to be a go between between the parish and the church when things don't quite go quite right and they've got other functions but you know they're there to be quite close to the incumbent then you've got the the, the parochial council the church parochial council the pcc who are elected body and they have a meeting every couple of months you have a something else called a standing committee in between that 
uh, where business, the business of the church is done. You, you also look at mission of the church to the parish. And so you kind of got these like checks and balances there. Uh, uh, Vira being, uh, well, it is the Church of England, but some, some can, if they're set up later, do it differently. But that's the question, isn't it? Where's the checks and balances? Where are the checks and balances on uh, Mike Pellavacci at this time? Um, he's got into that position of authority. He's he's using that as an abuse of power. Uh, what's it saying up here? A form of emotional and psychological abuse uh, characterized by a systematic pattern of coercive, coercive and controlling behavior in a religious context. So, you know, uh, this is uh, he knows what he's doing after all these years and, and he, he knows how to say things he knows how to control people and a whole group of people as well but also using his name on top of that and and, and um his spiritual authority you know that the, the church also relies on um him uh especially when it's, it's starting up and being so successful going down because it's mike pilavacci and soul survivor fame and and it's so sad isn't it it's so sad that um all this seems and for many people will be based on a lie you know questions of did he really have faith did he just use this to get into that position where he could be like this and and creating the culture that he had there which uh it doesn't sound good so there are so many things to learn from from this case and unfortunately from many other cases you know spiritual abuse can go on there's another church that had it for for years not again not far from me can go on for years and years and years and people say well why didn't they do anything this is because they it is coercive it's controlling it's uh, bullying and it's creating um using their personalities to dominate and um and to belittle people and to control people in whatever way it might be and um and creating that culture and we we have to as uh i'm not just talking about the church of england here um all denominations this happens in all denominations to learn from this and to understand um how this doesn't happen one of the one of the things is is to pull back from this uh, culture of um Christian personality, you know, big personalities who are famous and go and do all these talks. I'm not saying to get rid of those people who go do those talks um, because that's their gifting, you know. That's what God's given them that gifting to do. But, you know, there were to make sure that we're not worshipping them, to put them in, on a pedestal where they can... You know, either grow into something that they shouldn't be, or if they already are, and that they use that even more to uh, for for their what they would see their gain and um, to be in this position where now they're untouchable. And so uh, we have to question ourselves as a church how we see people who are uh, quite good at delivering messages without uh, to to listen to them, but without putting them on a pedestal, and also how we create those checks and balances to make sure that they're living a, a life that isn't contrary but it's you know what it's easy to hide your life um this might better actually wasn't hiding it he was just very very controlling there's, 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 there's a lot to learn and that and that's hope going forward isn't it that we 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 um we learn um those lessons and, and make sure that they don't happen again so um you put your comments to below what you think um are you part of Soul survivor how is the church now um were you uh under mike pilavacci in, in in teaching or whatever how's that affected has it affected your faith did you come to faith through soul survivor or, or one of the conferences how are you reconciling that put your comments below uh and and, and start that conversation and i will see you at the end of the week for rev dance roundup bye Oh, 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 oh,